there are ranchers who are doing these things that are having amazing results. Um, Alan Williams, who I mentioned was a professor and now he's a rancher and he's also a consultant uh, and he's a teacher of ranchers. His ranch in Mississippi, he ranches a thousand acres. He actually manages it. He's partnered with the man who owns the land. And the man who owns the land isn't quite sold yet on this whole thing. He has a lot more acres. He's doing a lot more big kind of farming with big machinery. The one shot where I'm talking about people spraying weeds, that's, that's that guy. And, uh, and he sprayed, he uses uh, uh, the planes to really put down the, uh, the pesticides. So Alan saw what was happening with the plants and they've got this thing called a native seed bank. So everyone's talking about native grasses. Well, what's happening is in all these prairies and all these grasslands, the seeds are still there for hundreds of years. And once they get stimulated the way they want to, they basically said, screw you guys, we're not growing. You've, you've changed everything. But as soon as they replicate what the herds are doing, as soon as they start doing that, the seeds pop back up that these folks haven't seen in their lifetime, that maybe their grandfathers saw, maybe their great-grandfathers and grandmothers saw. That's happening all over the U.S., and I believe it's happening all over the world as well. Um, so that's a pretty fascinating thing. But when all these plants come up, you get all these insects. When you get all these insects, like someone's trying to get in, you get all these birds, and wildlife. And so that land, that thousand acres in that county outside of Starkville, Mississippi, is the hunting spot. All the hunters know it. So now they're renting the rights to hunt on that land. So it's another income stream for the rancher. It's, it's, it's rejuvenating wildlife, so you've got the bio, biodiversity thing happening. And then all these ranchers in Starkville, Mississippi, become stewards of that land. They're making sure people don't come in and over poach. They're protecting it because they want that land to be what they want it to be, which is good hunting ground. And these are the touch points, certainly all across the U.S., where the hunters and the fishermen are all realizing what's going on. They just don't want Al Gore to tell them. <laughs> That's kind of just the truth. It's, it's just that simple. And so, um, and our folks down at the front row are nodding their heads as well. Um, and that's no cut to Al Gore. I wouldn't be here without his movie. I saw his film, world premiered Sundance, it changed my life, something clicked. But I think he's done his job, and now we need a lot more people doing their jobs, and they're doing it. Um, so it's just fascinating, all the systems. I call it unintended benefits. You know, Alan Williams did not change his ranching techniques to have more money from hunters and to have hunters be his stewards. He didn't do that. And so what's really happening, and, and it's not like we used to do it this way and we forgot and we're doing it now. These are new techniques. We used to have cattle and food together, but we've always been plowing. And, and plowing is... is, is uh, it's the worst thing you can do for the soil. Because what's happening in the soil biome is there's the main ingredient, uh, well, one of the main ingredients is called mycorrhizal fungi. And it's like a web. So if you have healthy soil and you, and you dig it up and you see the sort of white webbing stuff, that's that. And it's, it's adding the, uh, the surface area for your plants by the thousands. And what's happening is there's beneficial bacteria, beneficial mycorrhizal fungi, nematodes, in a in a handful of healthy soil, there are 70,000 different organisms. 70,000. And so it's all about the soil. And if you, I'm sure you could trace a lot of our health problems to the soil. And so this is about health care costs. This is about water. This is about biodiversity. This is about rancher health. And so I didn't know that when I got into it. I was looking at ways to get carbon out of the air to slow down climate change. But it, it, I've been studying this particular system for seven years and I haven't yet found the downside. My eyes are open, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it, but we haven't found it. And so what happened was, as I was researching this film, I wanted to talk to a lot of scientists because I was trying to find out who's measuring this stuff because we need the measurement. You know, you can have Alan Savory give a TED talk and claim that this is the solution, but he can't back it up. And when you can't back it up and you make a claim like that, most of the scientific community says, you're a charlatan, get out of here, yet the scientific community is not going to these ranches. 
So it's, it's kind of a, almost a damage more than a help. So as I was looking for who's measuring it, how are we measuring the carbon, how are we measuring these systems, I interviewed a lot of ranchers. I mean, I'm sorry, I interviewed a lot of scientists. Different universities around the United States. Uh, we have what's called a land-grant university system. Every state was granted land in the 1880s to have an agricultural university to teach farmers how to farm. And so we, we call them ag universities. Um, so I was calling folks that happened to be at these universities, and each one of them was passionate about measuring pieces of this system, these new systems, and they all were marginalized. Jason Roundtree at Michigan State University wants to measure what's happening with the methane. Everyone knows that cows burp methane. And the common wisdom is that that methane's worse for the planet. And if you keep cows on the grass longer, then it's going to be worse for the planet. But what he's finding out is there's methanotropes in the soil that eat the methane. So we need to find out how much of the methane they're eating. His early studies are showing they're eating more than the cows are emitting. He gets threatening letters because he's talking about changing a system. David Johnson at New Mexico State University is studying what's happening in that soil when you add carbon to it. And when you get to four or five percent carbon, which is a lot more than a lot of our soils, a lot of our soils are one and two percent carbon, <coughs> something happens where the plant actually starts giving to the system. Everyone I've talked to over the years has said that plants take from the system, therefore you have to put fertilizer and stuff into the system. He's showing that at a certain point the plants give to the system because they know the system at a certain healthy point are going to give them everything they need. So the plants become much more nutritious, therefore the animals that eat the plants are much more nutritious. Even my vegetarian friends, I say you really want cows on every piece of land that, that's being farmed with cover crop. If we don't have that cover crop, we don't have that healthy biome. If we don't have that healthy biome, we don't have healthy food and we have a bad water situation. And that's what's happening. We've done the experiment. It's about 75 years old right now. And here it is. And, and so how can we make ranchers more resilient, farmers more resilient? How can we make them more money? How can we take the risk away from them? These are the things, right?